Welcome everyone to today's performance clinic, Dynatrace Synthetic, getting started with synthetic private browser monitoring. This is part of my performance clinic series and today I'm here in Gdansk with Jan. Jan, maybe you want to quickly give an introduction on who you are, what you do with Dynatrace, what your area is and then we'll kick it off. Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is Jan and I'm a technical product manager in Dynatrace uh, for uh, HTTP monitors and uh, locations being private and public locations. So uh, of course this uh, today's session is on uh, browser monitors running on private locations meaning it falls into my responsibilities. Uh, so, so I just wanted to share with you guys uh, the new feature that we just got recently. Perfect and there was a blog post also that just came out yeah. a while ago. Yeah. Uh, if people want to stay up to date because this video will be online and so in case people see this later and they want to know what's going on blog.dynatrace.com, check out the product news. I would say the best is to just look at your name and find yep. the author blogs from you and then you will see everything. Then you will see a lot of new blog posts coming soon uh, to the blog post from me as well. Cool. There is a lot of stuff happening around synthetic. This is a not only a very hot year but also a synthetic year. Perfect. All right, so then um, Jan, please you know, give us some insights. I will cut my video stream now. Your, yours can still stay up and uh, then you know, show us the latest and greatest. Okay, uh, so can you see, can you guys see my screen? Because, yeah, okay. So let's maybe go to a second uh, slide as I've already introduced myself. So uh, let's start off with some inf basic information. So uh, synthetic monitoring is a part of digital experience monitoring and, uh, and dying trace. Uh, the other uh, important uh, pieces of the puzzle that, that we have here is real user monitoring and session replay. Those three, so basically having information about your real users using your web applications and the possibility to record those sessions that your users have together with a synthetic uh, information provided as a clean room environment benchmark uh, running from uh, either browsers or as simple HTTP uh, requests currently. Uh, so, so these three uh, together give you a one uh, on the market uh, pane of glass in, 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 into what was happening in your uh, in your digital uh, business. Okay, so of course these uh, these these run together with the analytics provided uh, and by Dynatrace and, and the full AI uh, engine that, that runs underneath, uh, and we have business insight services that that can, that can uh, work with these as well as, as an option for you guys. Sorry. Okay, so uh, Dynatrace Synthetic. Uh, some of you may already be using uh, some of our uh, options. So we have had HTTP monitors on private for a while now. These run on Linux and Windows as well. Uh, these are simple, lightweight uh, monitors that ba basically execute an a HTTP request being a post or, or a GET or whatever. Uh, on your service. Uh, these are currently single requests, although multi-request option is coming, and these are currently only available in private. But on public, we had uh, a browser monitoring options for, for a while, so either a single URL or a multi-URL click path uh, was something that was able available for, uh, on public, but few guys were asking us constantly, and I, I totally understand why, for a private option to monitor your internal applications or to monitor from your locations set up in your uh, in, in, in your environments uh, so, so, so basically both, both those scenarios so so new option for private has, has, is something that we just added so this this uh, presentation we have here is about this option and about how to in, install it and what would you expect during the installation? Uh, so this option is currently available only for Linux, but it is coming uh, on Windows, let's say this summer. Uh, this is the target. So uh, first of all, when you start off, you have to, of course, fulfill the uh, hardware requirements. So, so we have uh, several options for you guys. These are, these are our estimations based on our uh, performance testing that we've done, uh, of course, no two tests are the same, so all, all the tests will differ uh, depending on the complexity of the web page uh, tested and complexity of the monitor itself, of course. So, so one monitor can have many different uh, steps uh, or, or actions, let's say. 
So uh, fulfilling this, those requirements, uh, you will be able to install the, um, the active gate that's synthetically enabled because what you are going to do uh, to create a private location is to install ActiveGate that is going to have uh, synthetic options as it used to be before. Uh, for ACP only, now it's going to be also uh, for browsers. Uh, one thing different uh, for, for that we have to of course have some other uh, components than, than, than uh, they, we had uh, a need for HTTP. So, so of course, for browser monitoring, we need browsers, and for browsers, we have well quite a long list of dependencies. So, uh, those dependencies need to be provided before you start the installation. So, of course, uh, everything is documented uh, on on our help pages. This isn't very uh, complicated. Uh, as you see, the supported systems now are in three. Uh, server versions of Linux, uh, these are Ubuntu Server 16.04, Red Hat and CentOS uh, version 7 uh, of the other server editions. But of course, mm, we, we will add Windows uh, soon as well. Uh, currently, for Linux, you have to supply Chromium version as well, although this is going to be soon, hopefully, well, uh, added uh, to the installation so that you guys don't have to worry about it. For Windows, we are targeting uh, this uh, right from the get-go. So, so this is something, and that that, that will not have to uh, be installed uh, separately, but will be included in the product. Uh, so, I'm I'm going to describe the installation process now, and uh, maybe we can jump out of the um, presentation into the uh, shell. Uh, I will show you how uh, how I run the scripts, mm -hmm. and we will get back to the presentation. So to install ActiveGate, you need to go to our uh, UI, and in the deploy data trace, you, you you get everything right from the uh, right from the UI. You basically copy the um, copy the comments. Of course, you need to provide the requirements earlier. But so so how does the installation look like? You install the synthetic enabled ActiveGate, meaning that first of all you you need to do a clean installation. Currently, we have no option of adding a synthetic browser monitoring option or synthetic option whatsoever to the running ActiveGate. You need to reinstall. So uninstall and install a new one. I will descri describe why in a second. It will, we, will, we will change that, but this is the, the version one requirement. So uh, this installation, when it uh, finishes and the ActiveGate is running, right for, for the clean ActiveGate, it will download the synthetic installer that will later on of course, verify the requirements, dependencies, and install the synthetic module on, uh, onto the uh, ActiveGate. So one thing that will happen for, for that is uh, we will turn off all the other typical um, features of the ActiveGate. So let's say one agent routing or Kubernetes or plugins will not be uh, normally working on uh, synthetic enabled ActiveGates. So uh, if uh, installation fails uh, on any of those steps, uh, currently, you have to uninstall the active gate that just installed and try to download uh, synthetic or verify dependencies or whatsoever uh, on the right from from uh, install the active gate segment here and uh, try and, and do the installation of the synthetic enabled active gate that you see on the top of this uh, uh, of, of this white box uh, again. Uh, this is something we, we we will optimize by basically uh, adding an option to add synthetic option to an existing active gate. Of course, this option will later need to turn off all the other features of the active gate, at least until we, we can guarantee that your test will run even in the peak of the agent traffic. Mm -hmm. So Jan, uh, just because a question comes in, and I think it's a clarification as well, yes, yes. I think it makes actually a lot of sense what you're doing here because you want to have dedicated active gates for synthetic monitoring. That's why turning off all the other features makes a lot of sense because you don't need all the resources, let's say, for yeah. collecting agent traffic and, and all that. Right? And also, uh, as we look at the places where our customers install the private locations, in most of cases, these private locations are actually placed in places where they don't necessarily uh, need agent uh, need true the, the traffic. Mm -hmm. So they, they will put them in the organization in the place 
uh, where uh, turning off those features is something that actually our customers requested uh, first. Mm -hmm. So, so, so yes, the, 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 you are totally right. If, if that was a clarification, I can clarify that. Perfect. And just as a reminder, folks that are online, if you have any questions, please use the question feature and go to webinar. And uh, as you can just observe, as you just have observed, I will moderate them. Okay. So maybe let's try to go into the. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I will cut your video camera now. I will do it for you um, okay. because then I think it's a little more interesting to see uh, the, um, yeah. the screen. Not that it's not interesting to see your face, but you yeah. know, <laughs> I mean, All, always easier. I, I'll be able to scratch my head. Uh, so. Uh, Any here, chance you can zoom in a little bit on that console if you're staying in the console? Uh, yeah, perfect. Seems I can. Okay. okay. So so. So first of all, uh, I, I, okay. So so I did uh, the op operation you see above is something that I already did. Uh, is because I need to provide my uh, credentials there to uh, register this Red Hat uh, um, account. So so th this this is a Red Hat actually here that we are on. And let me show uh, you the script I will be running. So. Okay, so I just created the script basing on our help pages that I just uh, posted to you guys in, in the uh, previous uh, in the previous slides. So we we can go to those pages in a second. But basically, what I did is I copied the all all of the Red Hat uh, segments here, and I will run them uh, one by one. What they will do is they will uh, register me and, and I, uh, enable uh, the additional repositories I need and install uh, the private browser monitor uh, engine dependencies. Uh, if, for example, during the ActiveGate installation, the synthetically en enable ActiveGate installation, you will see that you are missing some packages. Most likely what happened is you have not registered to, uh, to those uh, repositories successfully, uh, or maybe for some reason, uh, your subscription uh, reg uh, registration didn't work uh, and the first two repositories failed. So, so this is something we've already seen a couple of times in, in the EEP is basically uh, doing those tasks one by one. Uh, you, you need to verify whether they, they succeeded. Okay, so, so let, let's maybe uh, try to run the script. This should be uh, run as sudo as we are going to perform so some system operations. And I think when we were preparing for this, you actually explained to me the reason why you're using uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux here yes. is because it, that was based on the feedback that most of our customers... Yes, so, so, so we did EAP, so early access program for that a while ago. Uh, we had over a hundred uh, participants and uh, so, so I tried to measure uh, what system was the one that our customers uh, see, uh, at least the ones uh, who, who applied uh, the EAP, who's seen as most popular. And, well, I would expect uh, others, but it came out that it is uh, Red Hat 7 was, was the most popular system. And uh, as Red Hat 7 is pretty similar, it's ba basically the same as CentOS, let's say, mm -hmm. uh, from the installation, of course, level. Mm -hmm. uh, so so, so uh, I, I, I've chosen this one. Uh, as uh, something that I will base the uh, installation here. So, so as as you see, uh, it, it's it is running pre pre pretty smoothly. Uh, downloading all the packages. Lay, uh, after that, downloading the Chromium packages from uh, uh, from uh, our base S3. So we actually uh, pre-compile the Chromium for you guys. Uh, verifying that this Chromium version is not introducing any unnecessary problems, uh, meaning uh, performance problems, performance issues. For, from Chromium or Chrome to Chrome, uh, Chromium to Chromium versions, sometimes there will, would be a performance uh, change and you wouldn't want to see that in your charts, in, in your SLAs. So what we do is we verify that. So not every single version will be, uh, will be included. And of course, for, for now, uh, this, is, this needs to be supplied manually. But for uh, but very soon we will uh, we will uh, do it uh, automatically. So maybe let's quickly go to to the browser. I will quickly show you uh, how how uh, how to uh, it. Uh, so basically, when you go to install ActiveGate, 
and choose to run synthetic monitors from a private location, you see those three commands that, that you have to run. And I have those commands actually here. So this is the second script I prepare. So as you see here, I have three commands that, that, that I just shown you on the uh, screen here. So as I run these, I will install the uh, Linux uh, environmental active gate. Uh, I'll just show you that I'm doing that. Uh, let's, let's do this. Okay. So this installation is going, and since it's pretty big and it will take some time, let's maybe cut through the chase and and go to uh, the, the to, to settings, and I will show you how the. Uh, how the location is uh, uh, can be uh, can be extended with with your monitor. So uh, when you when you go to settings and uh, uh, private synthetic locations, I have a performance clinic location created here. So I took the liberty of uh, of creating a location and adding a monitor to it. Uh, right now, uh, I will add uh, a monitor to it. Sorry, I will add the monitor to it. Uh, that I already pre prepared uh, before. So this one, as you, as you as you've seen, I had three tabs open there. is is one that I just uh, used those scripts before, so so not to wait to download the uh, ActiveGate and install it, as it's pretty big. So so by adding this uh, ActiveGate, I just extended this location with uh, with with a new ActiveGate. It is, it is so simple. I just click Save Changes here, and this is done. So let's say you guys had it, had a location like this one here with only HTTP monitors, you could basically add one more active gate that's browser enabled and this location will be able to execute browser monitors right from the get go and with no downtime you basically get a new capability to it. Then you can go and uh, reinstall the uh, existing HTTP monitors therefore achieving actually a location with two, two uh, active gate nodes even more if you need. That, that will allow you to update those without any downtime in your synthetic uh, monitoring. So, so, so this is pretty, pretty sweet uh, HA uh, um, availability. Very cool. Yeah. So uh, let's go quickly back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. And by the way, while you're switching back, yeah. a reminder, folks, if you have any questions, right, just uh, put them into the question feature. Actually, one question just to clarify. The script that you showed earlier, yes, that's all in the documentation. Yes, let, let, let me be, be, maybe quickly jump here. Uh, I'm losing my core cursor, uh, so oh yeah, here it is. Uh, so let let me just quickly show you. You see, the highlighted option here is actually what I uh, just just downloaded, uh, copied when I was registering to the uh, to the Red Hat, and then you have the enabling option for for all the, all of the repositories uh, installing uh, the mm, missing uh, dependencies, uh, downloading the Chromium that, that we did, and installing Chromium. Uh, of course, you can also add uh, phones that I didn't do there, as a, this is an optional. Two, two additional clarifying questions. The first one, that Chromium, and I think you mentioned that. Yes. That Chromium is a version that we as Dynatracer yes. package, tested, and then uploaded yes. to the best three buttons. Yes, yes. The, 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 this, uh, this is a uh, this is a something. Of course, you can download uh, this version uh, from the official repositories as well. But we are requiring certain versions as we are verifying them. It takes quite a lot of time to verify them, and and uh, we do it to make sure that this does not impact your performance. So, so, so measurements. So, so this is very important. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, for now we are uh, showing them here and allowing everybody to download. In the future, we want to supply these with the on active gate and uh, synthetically enabled active gate installation as we will for uh, windows so so i i see it as a as a an, an un unnecessary step in the future that we can optimize mm -hmm. and making your user experience of an installation easier this is the first version so 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 that's mm -hmm. why we have it uh, like that cool mm -hmm. okay. there's one more clarifying yes. question or maybe even more like a real question uh, can an active gate run both HTTP and browser monitoring? Yes, of course. Uh, when when we look here, uh, those uh, um, those uh, active gates actually run too. So let me quickly uh, show something uh, um, as 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 an answer to this question. Uh, let's let's uh, look at uh, what monitors I have uh, here, 
and sort them by one location that I created and I showed you guys. So performance, clinic location one. As you see, mm -hmm. well, I was lazy. I just created three monitors here, but one from uh, from each type. So so uh, you ha you see that we are already have HTTP monitor, click path monitor, and a single URL browser monitor. Mm -hmm. uh, all of them are working from this location. Cool. Okay, so jumping back to the presentation. Uh, okay, so so when you have that uh, done, of course, uh, you need to make sure that everything is uh, configured so that uh, your active gate can reach not only your cluster but also the resources that, that you want to test. So let, maybe there is some proxy for it or, or whatsoever. So uh, those configurations for connectivity is something that you need to make sure of. Uh, also, I've already mentioned that uh, we are suppo supporting only exclusive mode for synthetic, although it is uh, possible to go into edit mode and change the custom properties uh, and uh, turn on some feature to see how it works. This, though, is not recommended in the production environment as it is not supported. And for high availability, I would suggest uh, running more than one uh, active gate node, although it's not necessary. It is only for HA. So uh, here I have this, uh, like a print screen from the documentation with, with, with the ports that, that, that uh, may need to be enabled uh, or, or open actually. Uh, so I've shown you that uh, adding uh, the monitor to the location uh, by adding it, it's, it's very simple to extend your uh, HTTP monitor location uh, with, with, with new capabilities. Uh, so, okay, that's that's basically th that. That's how easy it was. Of course, there there are uh, th there are places that, that you can trip. Uh, as, as I've mentioned, uh, the dependencies are, are something that's that's pretty uh, important. As installation will fail if they are not uh, covered, uh, and this will require uninstalling the active gate and uh, then installing it again. I would suggest, suggest doing a script that i just shown you. Mm -hmm. this, this is very simple. This is just copying, uh, copying the UI uh, and copying the, um, copying the help. Uh, this, this makes stuff uh, really easier for, for, at least it did for me when, when I was doing the installation. So uh, what's next? As I've mentioned, we are going to add Windows support very soon. Uh, cluster active gate support for directories managed is something we are already working on and is going to be deployed very soon. It will make uh, for our directories managed customers, uh, it will give them a possibility to create a cluster wide location that can serve all of the tenants. Uh, of course, we need to, we are taking care of the Chromium uh, depend uh, dependencies for Windows and this, this is something we want to focus on for Linux as well. Uh, happy news is that I just verified with the ActiveGate team that auto update for ActiveGate is something that is really on the horizon very, very soon this summer. And we are pushing uh, to get it as soon as possible as a default for synthetic as well. So the one thing that you, of course, have to uh, take care of uh, for now manually in the future that this will be done automatically is to have the version uh, on your private locations uh, for uh, all of the nodes, uh, basically the same. So you would, you want to have the same active gate version for all of the nodes. Mm -hmm. So with auto update, this is something that will happen uh, by itself. So so this is something that uh, that we are really pushing for, and something that is very close to my heart as as I, as I am the product manager for HCP monitors is uh, is multi request HCP monitors coming out. Basically now, the blog post should be uh, available within the next two, three days. Uh, so if you, uh, by, by a chance, have uh, 171 active gate, this is something already available for you guys. And with the next active gates, we will add JavaScript uh, pre and post execution scripting uh, and uh, OAuth building support that, that, that is actually basing on that. Uh, client certificate support and way more features that you will really love. So, so uh, really, uh, Dynatrace Synthetic is, is doing a very big push this year, and, and I hope to see you guys out there with questions and, and with real-life uh, problems that we can uh, tackle together. Very cool. Hey, um, I guess that's part of your presentation, right? I mean, that, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, th perfect. Let's go back to the previous slide, because there's a couple of questions that came in, and because we're going into Q&A mode, you may want to turn one. on your... Yeah, this one. Uh, you may want to turn on your video camera again, because... Even though yeah. some people 
get paid for looking good on camera. We don't get paid for looking good on camera, but it's still not too bad to look at us. Yeah, it's right. let, let's let's uh, use the chance that we can uh, show ourselves. Uh, exactly. Yeah. So uh, a couple of questions, um, and this is why I wanted to stay on this page. Uh, Windows support. Will this mean there are also other browsers supported like Edge or is it just Chromium? No, we are going for Windows support. Uh, at first, this is going to be uh, the same version of Windows that we are already supporting for, uh, for the HTTP monitors, so 2016 server. Mm -hmm. uh, 2019 server is already on the roadmap. Uh, we are not officially supporting other versions, but uh, we are not blocking them either. So it is possible to install on a different version of Windows. If the installation succeeds, it should work. Mm -hmm. uh, if you guys have a problem, we will try to reproduce that on a supported version. If we can, we will fix it for the supported version. And most likely, it, it will help for you. But we cannot guarantee as uh, we are or fixing them only on the supported ones. Mm -hmm. And then from the Windows perspective, the question was also, are you going to support any other browsers than just Chromium? For instance, will you be supporting Edge or any other browser? No, we are, uh, we are uh, pushing for Chromium. Microsoft is already basing their own a new browser on, on, on Chromium as well. Mm -hmm. So, so this, uh, this starts to look more and more like a core version of a browser mm -hmm. to provide a clean room environment, uh, SLA type of measurement. This, this seems like a perfect uh, browser. Mm -hmm. uh, to base on. So, so this, this is the browser that, that, that we've picked and that, that we are using yeah. at the moment. And I think it makes a lot of sense uh, to pick one for, as you said, the SLA yes. monitoring because for all the other mon uh, browsers, we provide really user monitoring. Exactly. Run, right? we, we have support session replay. I mean, this is all covered. Yeah, exactly. The, the whole, uh, the whole uh, dam, as I've shown it on the first slide, uh, gives so many options to, to, to monitor uh, the digital experience uh, of, of your users, so mm -hmm. so you will get all the necessary feedback for for, for other browsers from your users uh, and and insight into the sessions with the amazing session replay. Mm -hmm. The next question is: uh, Are you planning to store screenshots on the managed cluster, uh, or storing them to AWS or upload to AWS? What's about the storage situation? This is uh, I, I'm happy that you asked. So so uh, I I like those questions that I actually can give good answers on like not 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 necessarily uh, say that we can't but yes we are currently implementing that uh, the storage will be moved away from 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 uh, from AWS and it will be stored on a, on a cluster so yes cool perfect yeah. uh, next question is uh, what's the licensing model for synthetic private I it's, guess it's the same as it's it's on public. The data uh, goes to the cluster as well. So so the, so this this is this is the same. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can you go back to the browser to your uh, mm -hmm. environment? Yes, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you go to your go to your locations that you had. Yes. Sorry, guys. This this is our like uh, one of our tenants. Oh, sorry. Uh, so it's on the web because this was a little fast earlier. Yeah, okay. Mobile monitoring. Yes. Private synthetic locations. Perfect. Yes. Uh, because people are asking where is the uh, setting again. Okay. Yeah. I'm so, so, sorry if I was too quick. Uh, no, it's sometimes the Wi-Fi that we're here. And then, um, so you have in, in each location here two active gates. And maybe you've mentioned it earlier, but maybe you can repeat. Uh, DynaTrace will automatically distribute the loads. Yes, of course. And, and with the browser monitors coming in, uh, we will, of course, uh, see the difference between a, an HTTP and only and the browser and HTTP active gate, and we will not distribute the load of the browser executions to the non-browser enabled active gate, so, so that uh, by adding a browser enabled active gate to the HTTP only location, you extend that uh, locations uh, monitor synthetic monitoring capabilities with browser monitoring as well mm -hmm. so that, that, that that's why this this was described by me as as i see it as a valid scenario for all of our http only uh, mm -hmm. customers currently mm -hmm. and the next question again this maybe uh, the, the the title wasn't clear of this webinar but the question is when a local url supported so meaning testing something within my own private space, but this is exactly what yes, they showed. Yes, exactly what so, they let, let me try. Uh, yeah. so, so, okay, I'm not sure how, how, how uh, private I can go here because yeah. we are actually doing so, some, some of our uh, um, t 
tests that that that, that are done in in Dynatrace here. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. okay, so so these three are basically something that we are doing for ourselves here in in, in Gdansk. We're dog fooding our own solution, mm -hmm. uh, monitoring our internal apps that are used for. Uh, vacation or, or whatsoever. So, so we are uh, verifying that these and these cannot be accessed from outside. These are totally yeah. internal apps. So that means the whole support we've just been mm. demonstrating, it's called private browser location support. That means you can install an active gate within your own data center yes. and then this active gate can execute tests that obviously can test all of your local data center URLs, like as you said, HTTP server name port slash URI. So that's already there. Yes. The, 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 this, this is one of the uh, mentioned earlier scenarios. Uh, mm -hmm. So so one is uh, monitoring your internal uh, URLs, internal applications that are not accessible externally and you couldn't use the pri public locations for them. The mm -hmm. other scenario that, that's also valid is to, to test the external uh, addresses from within your organization to make sure that people within your organization uh, can access them as well. So, so both of these uh, most, most common scenarios for private locations, for private browser uh, monitoring, uh, make sense here. Yeah. And then um, from an HTTP perspective, because you said you're also the product manager for yes. HTTP monitors, that's also been so like testing local HTTP yes, of, of yeah. course so HTTP monitors are perfect for your API testing or for when you look at the uh, mobile monitoring and, and 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 you think of your mobile apps they're mo mostly relying on APIs so so uh, or, or services you, you 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 can test those services with with uh, um, HTTP monitors and multi request monitors make them uh, even more sophisticated maybe for some reason you want to uh, do one test after the other every single single time you do them. So that would mean doing two, two separate calls, one after the other. Maybe you have complex authentication like OAuth oh, well, that needs more than one request mm -hmm. to, to, to succeed. Or maybe uh, you have uh, a need for some logic. So uh, maybe you need to uh, create some, let's say, let's say we want to monitor our own API in Dynatrace. Uh, me as a uh, Dynatrace synthetic product manager, I would want to know that my uh, public REST API for uh, for controlling my uh, my uh, monitors works fine. So what would I do? I would create a call that first creates a monitor, then verify from the verifies from the list what was this this ID and did it create properly? Mm -hmm. And if it did, I would try to change something in it. Let's mm -hmm. say change its name. Verify that it changed again. Then I would try to delete it and then verify that it did delete. So if I did all of those, let me, I'm, I'm not sure, but I think it was six calls now, yeah. even without authentication. So then maybe if the second one uh, failed, so I wasn't able to change the monitor for some reason, maybe the API changed, uh, there was some breaking change and, and I just noticed with that. So I would still want to delete it. So yeah. I, I already have a need for the logic here as well. I would need to skip the step uh, uh, steps failure and not not maybe fail the monitor before be, be, before I delete that because I don't want uh, uh, like the test uh, test uh, monitor lying there be uh, uh, because uh, I I didn't delete that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next question is around reporting. Yeah. So uh, the question is, what about reporting? Can we send reports every day to our customers who would like to send PDF reports? Uh, is this is this an option? Reporting on synthetics and kind of automation on that. We we are currently, uh, as as far as I know, we're currently working uh, strongly on uh, providing more dashboard-based reporting. So this is this this is a very cool feature that's coming soon, and uh, and and these uh, dashboards can later be shared as as reports. Mm -hmm. So 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 uh, I guess this should be an answer. Exactly. I think I had a performance clinic recently where we talked about dashboarding, and there's another one planned for the summer. Where we talk about, as you said, building not only dashboards for look, looking at them in the browser, yes. but also for, uh, on a scheduled basis, creating reports, sending them out via emails. Yeah, I, I love the session on uh, reporting that we had during the Perform Barcelona. Yeah. I think it's recorded and it's accessible. Yeah. So this is also something cool to 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 look at. Uh, so so yeah. Yeah. And that actually reminds me, if you may want to switch back to the slides now and go to the yeah. last uh, to the last deck. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the OK, 
Can you see? Yeah, perfect. So uh, there are a lot of other performance clinics I've done in the past, and, and everything around uh, dashboarding, reporting. There's already a couple of sessions out there. So if you want to have a look at the material, they're also they're both on Dynatrace University. You see the link there, and also the Dynatrace Full Stack YouTube playlist. This is also where we talked about um, uh, dashboarding and reporting. Also a lot of other links here. Um, now there's another question that just came in. Do we have any plans to support the existing Windows boxes for synthetic monitoring? So existing Windows boxes, I think. Let me. I think the way I would answer the question you just mentioned, that uh, support for Windows is coming, but the minimum required version is going to be Windows 2016. Yes, exactly. Right? So that means if you have Windows 2016 boxes laying around somewhere and you want to use them, then you will be able to use them. And time frame is going to be uh, at the end of the summer, probably. Uh, I, I don't want to give any promises, but I would be looking at the blog post in a, like early August very closely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, next question, uh, hi Jan, what is the limit for file downloads in browser scripts? I know that the classic synthetic had a limit of 10 megabytes and he was wondering is there, are there any downloads for downloading content if they want to, I assume the test script wants to walk through steps and then download something in the app that it's testing. I'm, I'm, I don't want to lie here uh, and, and shoot I out from, from my head, I, I would need to verify the documentation for the for browser monitor limit. Uh, so, 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 uh, if if I if I can gather uh, like some contact here, I, I would. Uh, yeah, I will. Um, um, Jennifer, if it's okay with you, I have your full name and your email. Then uh, I will forward it yeah. to Jan, or you can also reach out. Yeah, uh, of course. Uh, yeah, I will. I will, I will reach out to, to Jennifer. Uh, Perfect. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, well, I think this was exciting. Yeah. Right. So yeah. it means what we have now is private browser support. So you showed us installing the active gates. Uh, you showed us that there's obviously more coming, yes. especially around making the installation easier and fault tolerant. But right now, we can already, you know, assign active gates, synthetic active gates, to private yes. locations, and then execute both browser and HTTP yes. tests yes. on but private locations. Still, I, I believe that if I was able to do that installation here during this call, yeah. uh, during this presentation, it, 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 it shouldn't be too hard. Even without the uh, user experience tweaks that we are coming with, uh, coming yeah. up with, and it is going to be get to way easier with, with every single one that we introduce. Mm -hmm. And by the way, folks, uh, if you want to see how to actually create a synthetic test and how to then schedule it, I already have two sessions, I believe, already on the YouTube channel and on Dynatrace University that talks about getting started with synthetic and advanced synthetic. So just go on universitydynatrace.com or on the YouTube playlist and then uh, find the getting started and advanced synthetic sessions there. Uh, now another question, now this is a support question in terms of uh, will there be an option to support or the question is how to install a used synthetic in iOS and Android? How to install a how, how to basically run synthetic tests on iOS and Android and I believe our so we support Chromium right now? With yes, your... yes, we, we, we support Chromium uh, and this Chromium uh, is running from the active gate that's either the one of the three Linux uh, types of flavors that I just uh, introduced mm -hmm. uh, or our Windows. Uh, we are not running, uh, there is no way to, to run synthetic uh, from uh, Android, although you can, uh, for browser monitors, you can of course uh, specify the mobile web and device profile mm -hmm. uh, that, that you want to choose. And there uh, in the UI, let me quickly mm -hmm. go to the UI and into synthetic. I don't know why my cursor is disappearing. Do you see I it? think it's, I see that, I see it. Yeah, I think it's called a webinar. Sometimes when you switch things, I think you want to move around and then click on something. Then I click, now I click something. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, click, click now. You're now in the UI. Click. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, guys. I cannot uh, see my cursor and I cannot. I can. I, I'll show you my screen. Then you can see your. Oh, screen. that's that, 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 that's perfect. Yeah. See okay. Yes. Okay. 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 <laughs> that's funny, actually. Yeah. I never did this something like that. Oh, exactly. yeah. Perfect. And now I create a monitor, and then I need to create a browser monitor. And when you look here, the the device here uh, again. I need to look at your monitor. <laughs> That's funny. So 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 you 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 can uh, you you can choose different uh, device profiles here. Uh -huh. 
So, 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 so I believe this is the closest I can get to, to your answer. Mm -hmm. But I guess if people want to do some synthetic testing on real, let's say, iOS and Android devices and native app, this is not, this this is not, not something this, we support. This is not support. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Again, thank you so much. I'm pretty sure I'll have you back because, as you said, it's going to be it's the hot summer, but it's yes. also going to be very hot year for synthetic. Yes, I can't I can't wait for the next meeting. Yeah, <laughs> we'll do it. And uh, well, thank you for everybody that was on the call today. If there's questions later coming up, answers.dynatrace.com is where you can get in touch with all the Dynatrace community and also the product managers yes. around there. They also use the answers uh, forums for pushing updates. I know that's like. Um, I know that especially the dashboarding and reporting team is using yes. it. Also stay uh, up to date on the blogs. Jan and team are blogging a lot about product news and updates. So that's a great way. We, we have yeah. a product ideas section in, uh, on our community. Uh, mm -hmm. If you have ideas uh, that, that you want to push and there is something that you may, maybe are missing, uh, basically push it out there. and. We we always look at these. Of course, we would like it to to get, gather more uh, support from other users. So there is a voting button. Vote for the ones that you like, and we are looking at them always mm -hmm. and, and and trying to push forward the ones that are uh, the most popular are and, and in line with our strategy. Perfect. Cool. Well, with that, let's wave goodbye. Yeah. See, I don't uh, see my face, but I believe I'm waving. Uh, you're waving, you're, and you're almost in the frame. Uh, almost. <laughs> that, that's funny. I don't see my cursor. Yeah, I don't even see that. Come on. That's okay. Bye-bye, <laughs> and thanks to you for recording. Bye-bye. Yeah, thank you.